Hello and welcome to Scuttlebutt, a program for Navy's people and issues that matter to you. I'm Warren Ross of the Navy, Mark Tandy, coming to you this edition on board HMAS Success alongside Fleet Base East. In this edition, we'll take a look at the different activities that ships do to assist charities and communities. We take a look at a future asset for Navy currently being built in Spain and we'll farewell one of our most important and best known Navy members, Claude Chules, and say goodbye to HMAS Manura. But first, many of our ship's companies have adopted charities. HMAS Canimbla has recently spent time with their charity and literally become celebrities. Well, Blackheath Public School is uh, very close to Canimbla Valley, which is uh, obviously, for obvious reasons, affiliated to the ship. Um, over a number of years, we've had a, a very good relationship with the, with the school and um, to the point where we decided that it would be nice to come up to this school and help out in any way that we could uh, today. In my time on board Canimbla, we've uh, organised for the kids to come down uh, at the latter end of 2010 for a tour of the ship and uh, a tour of the Heritage Centre in Garden Island. Uh, today we've been uh, doing a small presentation to the, uh, the students of Year 5 and Year 6 at Blackheath Public School. Uh, we've helped in the garden, uh, played with the kids in recess and uh, played fun with them in, on the sports day, a bit of volleyball, a bit of soccer and uh, Oz tag and basically got some of the ship's company off the ship to have a bit of fun and talk to the kids. So far, the students have treated us like football stars. Um, they've been coming up and asking for autographs and been really nice and very pleasant kids. And it's for a lot of them, it'll be their first um, sort of exposure to the Australian Defence Force and the Navy as a whole. So I think it's invaluable for us to come out to other region, other places and towns and, and let people meet us and see what good work we can do. Outside community work is very important for Navy. Uh, it gets us a part of the community, apart from where we're at sea. It also gives us an opportunity to get away from our normal workplace and really uh, become part of the community, which, which what Navy and the Australian Defence Force should be. This morning we did some gardening, removed some big rocks for them, uh, removed some compost, did all the things that the teachers and the um, uh, volunteers can't do themselves all at once. So I feel like we really helped out. And we had a lot of fun at recess and at lunchtime, played tag. Chinese whispers. Yeah, the relationship between Blackheath School and Canimba is fantastic. The work they've done in promoting both the school and, um, and the Navy and Canimba itself has been enormous. Blackheath is very much a community school and that's very evident when we can reach out and our extended community being the Canimba crew. Um, the kids are so overwhelmed with uh, firstly when we visited the ship last December and this re return trip this year and the crew have been fantastic and really built a good rapport with the kids here. The students love having the Navy personnel here, um, which was evident at our morning tea break when they were all asking for autographs. Um, in their eyes, they're superstars and, and that's, that's a right, rightful thing that should be there. Um, they do a fantastic job for the country and to have those role models at school um, is invaluable for our kids. I would recommend that any relationship built between schools and, and then defence force would be fantastic, um, although we'd like to keep this one <laughs> for ourselves. Um, it's been so positive for the kids, the staff and the community in, in whole, and I'm sure that's reciprocated by the, by the crew of Canimbla. February was a special month for the Royal Australian Navy with the launch of the first hull of the Canberra class landing helicopter dock ships. The Chief of Navy was on hand to witness this historic moment.
In May, Navy and Australia said farewell to one of its most important and best known members. Claude Chules died in a Perth nursing home aged 110. Claude was the last veteran of World War I. His family joined the Navy family in farewelling him in tradition and style. In May this year, Navy and Australia said farewell to one of our most important and best known members. Claude Schulz died in a Perth nursing home aged 110. Claude was the last veteran of World War I. His family joined the Navy family in farewelling him in tradition and style. They came to mark the passing of the Great War into history. Claude Shaw's passing broke the link between those who were there and we who remember them. Mr Shaw's family gathered at St John's Church in Fremantle, joined by a long list of dignitaries, including the Minister of Defence and Chief of Navy. Claude Shaw's was a member of the Royal Navy from 1916 to 1926 and transferred to the Royal Australian Navy and served through World War II until retiring in 1956. His career in the Royal Navy and Royal Australian Navy spanned some of the most significant events in maritime history of the 20th century. This was the end of an era. As the last known combatant veteran of the war to end all wars, Claude was among our last living memories of those momentous days when the German high seas fleet surrendered in 1918 and was later scuttled at Scapa Flow the following year. And as Australians, we remember a man whose life spanned the entire existence of our Navy, which came into being only two days before Claude was born in 1901. Some would argue, and I would support that, he was our senior Navy man. Claude and his large family have grown up around the Royal Australian Navy. The funeral provided a moving tribute for the sailor, the veteran, the family man, and in his later years, the firm pacifist. It really was a long, long life. If he had been born 30 days earlier, he would have been born in the reign of Queen Victoria. He was born two years before the Wright brothers flew their aeroplane at um, Kitty Hawk. So it was a long, long, long life. And when we grew up married and produced this marvellous brood of grandchildren, he couldn't have been happier. He was back in the days when he was teaching the boys and the girls all about boating sailor things, knots, cut towards your chum, all these things. Around the coffin, family mementos, a book on Claude, a favourite cup, the little things which made the man. What began as a family affair ended in full naval tradition. Claude was carried out of the church by sailors from HMAS Stirling. Outside, 110 Navy members lined the route from the church. A fitting final escort to a remarkable man. We also said goodbye to a member of our amphibious fleet, HMAS Manura. She was decommissioned in style at Fleet Base East in May.
And that brings us to the end of another Scuttlebutt for 2011. We'd like to leave you with a special tribute to our families, the people who support us in what we do, and that is to fight and win in the maritime environment. Until next time, I'm Warren Boss of the Navy, Mark Tandy. Stay safe. When the big day arrives, the emotions are raw. It's been so long, but you got us through. An email or a photograph, a wave or a hug, we carry those with us. It makes it easier somehow, just knowing that you are there, waiting. The months away doing what we love, leaving those we love behind, far away but far from forgotten. It's the little things you miss. The first step, a smile, a good grade or that perfect try. We get the job done. It's what we do. Honour, honesty, courage, integrity and loyalty. Our values, your values, Navy values. You are family, our Navy family. <laughs>